If you have taken Calculus 2, or its AP equivalent, Calc BC, you have come across the Series and Sequences unit, and like many students, perhaps found it particularly difficult. In contrast to other calculus topics like derivatives and integrals, which often come with easily digestible graphical representations, Series and Sequences are often taught with a real lack of visual supplements. As a firm believer that the teaching of calculus, and ultimately all of math, should always be accompanied by a visual, I hope to illustrate to you today why the alternating series estimation theorem must be true and how its conclusions directly derive from the convergence test of an alternating series. I'm Nuno Carvalho, and let's begin. Before we can talk about the estimation theorem, we must clearly define what an alternating series is. Like any other infinite series, it can be generalized to the sum of a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way to a sub n, where n is approaching infinity. For a series to be alternating, a sub n must alternate back and forth between positive and negative. And now given that the series is alternating, it will converge if the absolute value of a sub n is eventually always non-increasing and approaching zero. The focus of this video is not about why these conditions prove what they prove, but instead about understanding how we can use them to deduce information about the infinite sum as explained by the alternating series estimation theorem. Instead of reciting what the theorem states and working backwards to prove it, let's instead explore what conclusions can be drawn from an alternating series given that it converges to some value L. We'll begin by drawing a graph. On the y-axis will be the partial sum of a series to an integer n, and on the x-axis will be said integer n. Given that an infinite series is the limit of a partial sum as n approaches infinity, we expect the y-value of our data to get closer and closer to L as we go to the right. Let's zoom in on an arbitrary value of n. We begin by plotting the partial sum s sub n, which equals a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way to a sub n, where each term is flipping between positive and negative. This also means this sum is equal to the partial sum of the previous term plus the nth term. If we assume that a sub n is positive, we can plot s sub n minus 1 below s sub n and call the vertical distance between them a sub n. Now let's plot the next data point, s sub n plus 1. Where can it go? I want you to pause and think about why our next point will be confined to a certain range. If we were to place it above s sub n, it would mean that we have two terms in a row of our sequence a sub n that are of the same sign, thus violating the property that an alternating series must have terms of alternating signs. So, s sub n plus 1 must be below s sub n. What if we were to place it all the way below the partial sum of our previous term? Then at that point, the distance between the two sequential partial sums, which we've defined to be a sub n plus 1, would be greater than the previous distance between sums. Thus, it would violate the property that the absolute value of the terms in a converging alternating series cannot increase. So, s sub n plus 1 must be above s sub n minus 1. If we extend these constraints to all terms to the right, where eventually our partial sum becomes the infinite sum L, it becomes clear that L must be lying between any partial sum you choose and the partial sum that comes right after. This statement constitutes the first part of the alternating series estimation theorem. Let's continue. We now define the error of the partial sum at n as the distance between the infinite sum L and that partial sum. It is basically a measurement of how far off we are from the true value of this infinite series. Remember that since L must be between any two sequential partial sums, the farthest that L can be vertically from any point on our graph is at the point that comes right after. So we know our error cannot be greater than the distance between S sub n and S sub n plus one. Finally, let's piece together that the difference between two sequential partial sums is the term that separates them, which must mean that the error must be less than a sub n plus 1. 
This statement becomes the second part of the theorem. When we now take a step back and analyze the whole graph, we can describe the pattern that emerges in a more qualitative manner. As we look to the right, our partial sums always go towards L, but they overshoot it by some error amount every time. However, that error will be continually shrinking compared to the previous partial sum. As we extend this towards infinity, the graph makes it obvious as to why this series must eventually converge to L. The partial sum always gets better at arriving at L, although it cycles between underestimating and overestimating it. It then follows that subtracting S sub N from L will yield a value of the same sign as the term that comes after it. This finding becomes the final part of our theorem. Hopefully seeing this graphical representation has given you a more concrete understanding of why the alternating series estimation theorem derives from our prior understanding of the alternating series. But ultimately, the more important takeaway is that visuals can accompany a lot of math topics whose traditional teaching methods are severely lacking in them. If you strongly agree with that sentiment, I highly recommend you check out the YouTube channel 3Blue1Brown, although I am sure you have already heard of it. I'm Nuno Carvalho, and I thank you for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more educational content.